a biotechnology company in Silicon Valley, California, called Kuniku, is building processors made from biological neurons to detect scents in the atmosphere to fish out chemical and biological weapons and diseases. The Nigerian founder of the company, Osh Agave, and vice president of business strategy, Mo Momodu, both spoke to Arise Business correspondent, Rotu Sudiri, at the ongoing World Economic Forum in Davos, Switzerland. Here's the report. Osh uh, Agabi, uh, the CEO of Conico Corp. It's great to see you at uh, Davos 2025. What do you make of the theme this year about collaboration in the intelligence age? Oh, thank you so much for that question, which is uh, it's great to see you here. Um, as you know, I think AI is, is going to be a big deal. Um, the rest of the world is seeing that. Uh, those are signals we've seen in Silicon Valley for a moment. Um, it's only going to increase our productivity across the board. Um, I think it's very important that the World Economic Forum has chosen uh, to focus on the collaboration bit of it. Because I think that's what's really left, to really unlock that last value chain. Um, because now you have a single person that can open any LLM model or any AI model and draft a letter or come up with uh, a report in a matter of seconds. But what is the human angle to it? How do you get different perspectives, perspectives that machines don't have? So I think it's a good topic. It's something important to focus on. How humans and machines can collaborate in such a way that we're able to drive value um, for enterprise, for governments, uh, but also for society at large. So I think it's a very apt uh, thing to focus on in this day and age. Mr. Momodu, VP Strategy at uh, Conical Corp. Can you talk to us about what you, as a company, are hoping to achieve here at uh, Davos 2025? Um, so essentially, we, we are talking to a bunch of people. Uh, some of them have invited us to uh, speak uh, to a bunch of investors that are interested in deep tech. And they are fascinated uh, with what we are doing. Uh, some of them have seen what we are doing uh, virtually. And this is like an opportunity where people come together and they want to be able to see it and we can demonstrate to them and show them what we are doing with Koniku. Humans and machines collaborating to add value. Tell us, because that's what you're doing at your company, Koniku uh, Corp. Um, explain to us, because you're in defense and you're also in healthcare. Tell, tell us what it is you're doing. So the important thing to realize is uh, everything that we've been able to achieve in artificial intelligence today is possible because there is a large data set uh, that exists this large data set is on the internet, so we're talking about text, video, sound. Uh, it's all on the internet. So you can build a transformer model, for instance, or you can build a, an LLM model, a large language model, that takes advantage of all of this data to create really amazing things. Uh, and NVIDIA has been at the back end of it, building these GPUs, this chip, that makes all of this possible, that are in every data center that you find. Uh, the technology that we've built at Koniku is a smell processor. Uh, this is something that has really not been done before, and the data doesn't exist. So we are Koniku. Koniku is a word that comes from Yoruba, as you might know, which means immortal. Uh, it's founded by myself. Uh, this is based on the back of my PhD work uh, at the Imperial College in London and at the ETH in Zurich. I dropped out of my PhDs to start this company. Uh, but the important thing is we are creating a new kind of data set that nobody in the world has access to. This is really a new class of data set, and it's a new class of hardware that merges synthetic biology and silicon. So we have a chip that has living brain cells on it and other cell types to detect the smell in the air. So we now have applications in defense, so detecting things like explosive compounds, detecting things like chemical weapons, detecting biological threats, so like like COVID, uh, like uh, sarin gas, mustard gas, like bombs, like explosives, uh, TNT, and so on and so forth. But also, on the other hand, we are able to detect uh, smell that is related to disease. So we want to turn every home, bathroom in this world, every bathroom in every home in this world, we want to turn it into a healthcare data center. So people across the planet can have access to uh, really preventative healthcare at cost. 
Uh, there is no way we are going to build enough hospitals, train enough doctors on time to meet the emerging healthcare needs across the entire planet. Even advanced economies, they suffer from this. Uh, so Africa will suffer from this as well. So this is the technology we are bringing to the fore to really change uh, the face of healthcare, of defense, and so on and so forth. It's quite an impressive technology that we've built here over many years and we're very excited to deploy it across the planet. All right, now part of where you want to deploy it across the planet is Nigeria. We understand you've spoken to folks in the government about this. What was that experience like in terms of trying to get them uh, to buy into what you're doing? That's an excellent question. So we've, we've spoken to the, the Minister of, of Finance uh, of Nigeria. Um, the Honorable Minister Edun, we have spoken with him. He's very, very excited about this project. Uh, when we met with him in Abuja, he was very excited about it. He'd like to move forward with this project as soon as yesterday. Uh, he has delegated this project, uh, this project uh, to uh, the head of MOFI. Um, we've spoken with the head of MOFI. He was very, very excited uh, to see this uh, uh, company move forward. Uh, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to hear anything from him. He hasn't taken any step uh, further in this. Look, what we're looking to accomplish here is something many countries have done in the past. We would like to have some part of our company in Nigeria. We would like to build a significant portion of our company in Nigeria to inspire young people to build first principle technology that helps the Federal Republic of Nigeria earn foreign exchange. Nigeria needs to stop sitting in the back of the bus. We need to move forward to the front of the bus and show people what the talent that exists in this country is. The president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has made that very clear, that this is what he wants to accomplish for this country. The president has made it clear that he wants to take Nigeria to the next level. He has given that mandate to his cabinet. Right? And he has made sure, he has empowered all his ministers to make sure that this happens. And the Minister for Finance has indicated his full support for this, uh, but we've not been able to get enough traction at Murphy. Uh, and this is really a sad thing because our goal is to really situate the company, parts of it in Nigeria to inspire young people. We have offers from many countries uh, that are interested in this technology in Europe, in the United States, states in the United States that has offered us uh, opportunity to come and sit with part of their, uh, uh, our technology uh, either in their state or in their country. But I was born in Nigeria, right? And I would love to see that strong alliance between the United States and Nigeria that we can collaborate on the technology front. That's what we want to see in Nigeria. That's the Nigeria we all want to see. We want to see a Nigeria that is prosperous, that gives opportunity uh, for young people. And I might add that you know Nigeria sets the agenda for the whole of Africa. For us to see such a first class, first world technology being built in Nigeria puts everyone on notice that Nigeria will not lose. We will sit among other countries and contribute uh, what we can to see the progress of mankind. Speaking of progress of mankind, uh, Nigerian youth, you're talking about bringing them to the forefront. What do you make of the skills pipeline in Nigeria as far as education is concerned to be able to support this kind of tech you're putting forward? Because what you're doing is quite difficult, right? And it's really advanced. So what, what's your take on it and, and you know, that, on the skills pipeline in Nigeria for technology? You're 100% correct. You're 100% correct that Nigeria does have an infrastructure gap. Nigeria does have a skill gap. But I want, to, I want to help you look at this uh, challenge from a new perspective. Look, Nigerians are some of the most resourceful people on the planet, right? And today, there are tools on the internet that allows you to learn essentially any skill that you want. Look, I live in Silicon Valley. Yes, uh, I know the Peter Thiels of this world. I know a lot of investors in this world that are trying to reimagine education across, even in the United States that are looking to reimagine education, right? There are people that will tell you that all you need to work in Silicon Valley is to graduate high school, be able to read and write, and be able to do your sums. And you can go on the internet and learn a lot of stuff, right? So what we intend to do here is to show Nigerians the path Show Nigerians that it is possible for you to work for a multinational company that is in Nigeria and you can support a family, you can have a decent job and you can, you can express yourself. That's what we want to show Nigerians is possible. So I agree with you that is indeed, there is indeed a skill gap. But what we bring to the table is the little skill that you have, we will bring something. You can help us 
take our technology so much further, learn together with us, grow together with us, and together we can make the Nigeria we all want to see. My final question to you is a non-tech question. How, how is it that you're not freezing in, in wearing what you're wearing in these in this temperatures here in Dublin? So, so, so there's, uh, there's something a lot of people uh, don't know about me. I, I studied at the University of Lagos. Um, and after I left the University of Lagos, I came to Switzerland. Uh, I am also a Swiss citizen, as I am an American citizen and an Nigerian citizen. So I am really a global citizen with a lot of, uh, with a lot of uh, affiliation. So I lived in these countries. Uh, I lived in Switzerland for, for many, many years. Uh, so I am I'm quite used to the cold. I will have you know I also lived in Sweden, which oh, is wow. 200 Swedish miles uh, from the North Pole. So I know one or two things about cold. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Oshagami, uh, CEO of Conoco Corp, thank you so much for talking to Horizons. Wish you luck. Much. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.